Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, boy, this is going to be a very, very touchy message tonight that I need to share with you guys. And I don't really know where to begin. And I have pictured here on the map here, Dulce, New Mexico. Uh, by the way, we've got secret bases a little bit of everywhere and people don't really know about it. Uh, but Dulce, in fact, there's a very precious sister I spoke with recently at that not far from uh, Los Angeles there, close to the Pendleton uh, Air Force Base there. Very unusual UFO activity. Uh, well, I found out a lot about that activity that she's experiencing. I'm going to be sharing that. Uh, hopefully we'll interview her and share that testimony with you. But I was right there just recently and this is where I've seen so much UFO activity in fact if you live anywhere near there let's say if you're in Albuquerque you're near Dulce or, or, or any of the other places near there and you're using night vision you will see those things those that UFO activity streak across the sky there if you if you do and you're able to record it oh gosh please send it to me it ended up being a cloudy next few days was all cloudy i never could get the video footage i figured out how to do it with my night vision but it just stayed cloudy and i couldn't get the video footage i was too much in shock the first nights right so i just wasn't able to capture that and i really 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 regret that so badly i was wishing to be able to do that um anyway here's what i wanted to talk to you guys about tonight uh, a sister sent to me Revelation 11. Now, this is your two witnesses scripture right here. And the question was being asked, could this have already been fulfilled? Well, and I can understand why that would be believed. Uh, I have considered that before myself. And uh, I mean, after all, Jesus does meet Moses and Elijah on Mount Transfiguration. We have that passage there that could suggest to that because they do prophesy to him. But the one thing that stood out to me, which I have highlighted here in the, in the, in the dark color here, the more the blackish color here, or the gray. When they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. With that being said, and several other issues, but that's what stood out to me the most, it's something that clearly is not fulfilled. So we have to re-examine this. Um, or at least look deeper into it. But I will say too, I don't think that the witnesses are going to be as, for well, one, we'll just put it bluntly, they're not gonna be popular, period. But it may not be such a public spectacle as we think, even though we do have when they're dead. We know the scripture says, their dead body shall lie in the street, the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So we know it's going to be Jerusalem that their dead bodies lay in. And that didn't happen to Moses and Elijah 2,000 years ago when they appeared to Jesus on Mount Transfiguration. So now, of course, the word shall lie is italicized so it doesn't actually say it says and their dead bodies in the street of the great city spiritually called sodom and egypt now i think that's they're spiritually being called sodom and egypt because of the things going on in israel modern israel today sodom though is not homosexuality as some people would think that strange flesh according to the hebrew that is spoken of over in the uh um I believe that's the book of Genesis where we read that about when the two, two angels go down to, uh, to Sodom to try to bring out Lot and his wife and any of uh, the others that, well, that would follow. That word for strange flesh was not homosexuality, but rather it's more of an implication of fallen angel alien 
That's what that was. Um, there was, I forget the biblical commentator that brought that out initially. I always believed it, but he actually knew it by the right wording. And, and, and his name slips me right now, but I really admire um, the, the study that he did on this. This is something that Israel is doing today. They are very much involved spiritually of Sodom. In fact, in fact, uh, those of you that watch our Patreon channel, in fact, I just loaded a video up over there just a little while ago. Uh, I think you'll find very interesting. The Nimrod, I've shared with you before on Patreon, Nimrod's body was brought out of Iraq. That's the reason why we went to war in Iraq. There's actually a greater reason than that, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let that out as of yet. I'm working on some information about that, so I'm hoping to be able to share that with you soon too. Uh, but Nimrod's body is they are trying to to and sometimes I've been told that this has been successfully done already, putting a soul back into that body, resurrecting that body. Well the Israelis took over that project this year. And the people that I know in D.C. do not have any clue why the Israelis were allowed to take over that project, but they did. There's your Sodom and Egypt right there, right? Egypt, I'm not really sure why Egypt is mentioned in here unless it's because of the fallen angel technology, the alien gods, etc., things like that. That would be my take on it. But... When you look at the two witnesses, though, and we look at that in light of what's going on right now, reptilians are wanting to overtake this earth. The beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit, of course, we know it's Satan. And what is Satan? He is a reptilian. Okay? The serpent, the devil, as the book of Revelation clearly states, right? But let's, let's drop back and look at some of these passages here. And there was given me a reed likened to a rod. It's not a rod, but like a rod. The angel stood saying, Rise, measure the temple of God and the altar of them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under it forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy. 2,203 square days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Now, the reason why I tend to always lean towards Moses and Elijah, and I don't know if it's literally Moses and Elijah or if it's going to be two people anointed with their spirit, that I have no clue of. I used to believe it was literally are literally the spirit of Moses and Elijah on two people because as we see in the case of John the Baptist, or no, in the case of Elias, uh, uh, Elisha, when Elijah goes up, his spirit comes back or the gift that he had comes back upon Elisha and he's able to do the same things that he did. So I kind of leaned that way for, for a while. But really and honestly and truly as I really look at this as just as, plain as I can I don't know the answer to that all right so I'm looking at this now in in light of uh, just looking at the scripture the two olive trees or the two candlesticks we see that I believe in the book of Zechariah the two olive trees are on either side of the golden lampstand now Jesus Christ clearly is that golden lampstand and Moses and Elijah did stand on his either side on Mount Transfiguration that's why I kind of lean towards that. Now, there are those that believe Enoch and um, Moses because they say they've never tasted death. They were both, uh, not Moses, but Elijah and Enoch, that they were both never tasted death and they're going to have to die. Um, and they use the scripture, you know, it's appointed unto man once uh, for the judgment, uh, or, or once, once unto death and after this the judgment. But if you look at that passage there that Paul quotes, that is specifically referring to Jesus Christ and him alone. It has nothing to do with anybody else. But that's, it really is not, it's not worth arguing about. It doesn't really matter. Who, it, who the two are really is neither here nor there in this regards here. 
But let's look at some other things, though, that are important. If any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth, devours their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. That was Elijah's. That's what happened to him. They come up to try to take him. Fire came down and devoured him. It's really at his, at his word is what it was. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Again, that was Elijah. Turn the waters to blood. That was Moses. Smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Again, Moses and Aaron. But when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. You can go to Revelation chapter 9. You can go to Revelation chapter 20. That's Satan, the reptilian, the serpent that gets released out of the bottomless pit. Right now, the reptilians live in the heart of the earth. But their king is about to come up. And the strange thing is, like Rabbi Sadok, that I've quoted so many times, he says that Israel's help is going to come from within the earth. He has stated, if you see a golden reptilian hand, don't be fearful. That's your friend. It's not the friend of the two witnesses, I can tell you that much. It'll be their enemy. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great cities, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Okay? Um, and, they shall, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. All right, so we get all this, right? Now, if you look at Matthew, Matthew says, after we read, for after we go past the wars, the rumors of wars, and Matthew says, don't be troubled about those things. That's what our Jesus is saying that. Because the end is not yet. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against the kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilence, which are plagues, which you know the translation for that. You know, don't even have to go there, right? In diverse places. These are the beginning of sorrows. Those pestilence are the beginning of sorrows. Why? Because it's the reptilians that are coming up out of the bottomless pit, so to speak, that are going to wage war to take over this earth. Remember I did that message just recently where I said 60% of the Chinese would be dead, 50% of the Americans would be dead. Now, look at that on a global scale. All those nations that lose all these people, it's because of what they're planning on doing with that right there, pestilences. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. So even before the two witnesses have got on the scene, they're already deceiving the whole world, leading you right to Israel to a one world nation, one world order, new world order, and a one world religion. And because the iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but they that endure to the end, shall, the same shall be saved. This is the two witnesses right here in verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for what? A witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. Okay, that's when the end comes. When your two witnesses have preached to all the nations, then shall the end come. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of the Daniel, uh, Daniel, excuse me, spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. In the Hebrew Matthew, it literally says right here. Let me blow this up for you here. All right, let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay. Vehakore Yabin. Okay. Of course, it's, you know, Bemakum uh, Kodesh. That is uh, in, in standing up in the holy. This just says the holy, holy, uh, the holy, not the holy place, but the holy. And. The one that reads with divine understanding 
That's what it is right there, that divine understanding. When Daniel sees that abomination that stands up in that holy place, when it's actually, when it's, when it, when it's stood up in the holy place, who, in other words, somebody is going to take the place of the revelation of the word of God that's going to come during that time, right? Now, that's what Jesus brings out. But the gospel is going to preach all the world as a witness. That's why those two witnesses, why? They are the witness of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Their very fact that they resurrect will be the true witness that the resurrection was true. That's what I taught years ago. That's actually the part I meant to mention earlier that I, when I mentioned about Paul Bagley. Uh, bringing that out. He actually picked that up from what I taught long ago. I actually shared that with him. Um, and I just remember that's the way I actually taught it. I actually had taught it to where that it was when you, when their dead bodies raise up, why do their dead bodies, why are they three, three and a half days there? Because Christ was three days in the heart of the earth and when he rose up and people have always said, oh, it never happened, never happened. Well, that's, not only do they preach that he rose from the dead, but now they will raise from the dead as a testimony, as a witness that it was actually, it was true. Now, notice also, for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to, uh, world to this time, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Again, what is that? It's a clear reference to the reptilian agenda to wipe out humanity off the face of the earth, which is Satan's agenda. Then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. When it gets down to the point, uh, and that, that's critical right there. That is so critical, friends. Except those days should be short and there should be no flesh saved. Jesus knew that, the, that these reptilians are going to try to totally annihilate the human race of Paul off the earth using what? Pestilence, plagues. And at that time, he says, then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. When? This is what I'm being told from the intelligence circles that, I, that I'm a part of that when they come to nearly wipe out humanity, then they're going to come down like they're saviors of the world and they're going to offer you this antidote. I have to call it an antidote. You know, I can't tell you what it really is. And they're going to tell you that they are the ones that brought Christ. They're the ones that brought Muhammad or whatever else on this earth here. They're going to try to appear as saviors to the world. Isn't it interesting that Jesus warns you of that very same thing? In other words, when they're trying to totally wipe you out on the earth, then the man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there. And he tells you, don't believe it. For there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And friends, that's exactly what these entities have the ability to do. And they can look human. They can cause you to think they are human when they're not. And they can do that on a mass scale. We're living in a late hour, friends. A very, very late hour. I'm Steve Benoon. I trust this is a blessing to you in some way, friends. Listen, our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, on the top of your screen here. Our mailing address is there. Stephen Benoon, P.O. Box, 156 Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. If God lays it upon your heart, please support the work. I'm going to do everything I can to get the truth to you. But we are in a very late hour. God bless you.